Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and to those who are watching and worshiping with us via live streaming. How are we today? Are you feeling good or not? And, or are you happy or down? So pause for a moment and reflect on how you feel today. Nowadays, many of our brothers and sisters out there are with us today are not feeling good in terms of their emotional state. And I have encountered some friends who have struggled in that past but are now victorious today. Now my point is, most of the time we are down dahil nga sinasabi natin minsan pag may problema tayong na-encounter that I am alone or I have no family and friends that can comfort me. Or, ito yung pinakamasakit eh. No one loves me. But let us not forget that one true friend who's always been with us through our ups and downs, madalas tayo lang ang hindi pumapansin sa kanya or nakakalimutan lang natin siya. And He is the one who loves us the most. And that is Jesus. Can I get an amen for that? Yes, amen. So may I request everyone and inv or invite everyone to please rise and declare that indeed we have been reconciled to God and that He has called us friends. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing! Come on, who am I?
still love me right from the start when I was refusing your love kept pursuing come on let us declare it now that I've tasted your love my heart just can't get enough Jesus you have me you have me completely now it's your love in my heart running over every day of my life I'll draw closer such a perfect love oh you lift me higher higher lighting up my way everything is brighter brighter with you that Jesus was willing to give his life for unworthy sinners like us. So as we sing this song, may we be reminded of the cross and of the love of the Father. How deep the Father's love for us Oh 
worthy to stand before you today to worship you through your son Jesus Christ and as we continue to worship you O oh God may you bless each one of us and give wisdom to our speaker today the one who will share your word O oh God be with us and in the name of the Father and in your name O oh Lord in Jesus Christ amen and amen please be seated For our scripture reading, it is found in Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 20. And I'll be reading to you the New International Version. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Especially to all of you, who are our brethren who are watching us online. Thank you for joining us this morning. May we have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. This morning, please allow me to ask you a few questions. How is our life going right now? How has your Christian life grown since you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This morning, we may assess where we are in our Christian lives 
and what measures we have now in Christ's love. But before we go any further, let us take a moment to pray. Our most gracious Father in heaven, creator of everything in heaven and on earth, thank you so much, Lord, for this time, for enabling us to come to you. Thank you for this opportunity. And please use me, O Lord, as your mouthpiece this morning. I can't do anything on my own. Be with me, O Holy Spirit. Give us understanding so that we can somehow comprehend your glory through your word. I commit everything to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our text this morning is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. But allow me to read to you from verse 13. I asked you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know his love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that it is at work within us. This passage was written by Apostle Paul when he was imprisoned in Rome. He wrote this passage for the Ephesus Church. It is Paul's prayer for the Ephesian believers. Now, we'll discover Paul's motivations in praying. In verse 13, see the word therefore, which refers to previous past incident in the previous verses. Now, bakit kaya ganon ang passion ni Paul to pray for them? Why he kneels down before the Father? Now for us to fully understand the reasons of Paul, let us take a look back of the events in the previous verses. If we look at verse 1 through 12 of this chapter, we can see how Paul described as a steward of God's gospel, of God's grace. So what are Paul's reasons? In verse 2 to 3, Paul is entrusted with the task of administering or administrating the Ephesus church. What is going to administer for them is that the mystery made known by revelation as he already written briefly. It is the mystery of Christ, which is something that the Old Testament does not explain. However, the Holy Spirit has now revealed it to God's holy apostles and prophets. That is in verse 4. What mystery is it? In verse 6, the mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are here together with the Jews, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. This is God's plan that both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. In verse 7, Paul was entrusted with the responsibility to bring the gospel to the Gentiles through the working of God's power. In verse 8 to 10, he was commanded to reveal the mystery of the gospel personally 
to preach to the Gentiles the unreachable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery. This mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, keep secret from the beginning. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in each variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heaven places. This was his eternal plan which he carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. That is in verse 11. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently in God's presence. That is in verse 12. Now he comes to verse 13. Paul says to them, I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Again, the word therefore in verse 13 refers to the preceding event in the previous verses. Paul used the structural marker therefore, meaning he refers to what he said in verse 1 to 12. In summary, Paul emphasizes that the Ephesus, although they are Gentiles, they have the same privilege as the Jews. The moment they came to, ca to know Christ and believe in him, they have the privileges, boldness, confidence, and fathom or the unfathomable riches of Christ, even the life to the mystery of Christ. Also, they are fellow hearers and fellow members of the body of Christ. That's what he told them. We too have the same access to God through our faith in him. As a result, because you are fellow members of Christ's body, do not be discouraged because my suffering is for your benefit, which is your glory. This is why here in verse 16 through 20, Paul prays and feels for them. Did you notice in this verse, Paul says he bowed his knees before the Father? Perhaps for us today, it might not catch our attention or is not a big deal for us who among us today kneels down every time you pray probably occasionally lang di ba paul during this time showed his great affection his deep emotion maybe because they were experiencing persecution during this time or any hardship because of this he started to pray in verse 16 Asking God to do the following for them. Why Paul prayed earnestly for the Christians in Ephesus? For them to be strengthened with power. Paul prays for the Christian of Ephesus to strengthen them in power. Paul was asking this specifically for the Ephesians. Maybe because they were experiencing persecution or any struggle. He was aware that they needed supernatural spiritual strength to stay strong during this hardship. And he wanted the Ephesians to be strong enough to receive the riches of Christ's glory. This message is not only for them, but to all of us who believe in Jesus. What power do we ask from the Lord? This power is a supernatural power, spiritual power, which is from the riches of His glory, through His Spirit. This is not just about our physical strength to be strengthened, but it is all about our inner being. In Romans 8, 9, New Internal International Version, it says, But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit. If you have the Spirit of God living in you, and remember that those who do not have the Spirit of God living in them do not belong to Him at all. What does it mean to have the power in the inner being? It means we are allowing the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts 
and control our spiritual capabilities. How are we going to obtain to have this power? We are going to obtain this power through an action. It requires our cooperation with the Lord. In our communion with the Lord, this power is our evidence of salvation. How? By keeping exercising our faith and growing in the Word of God. Only when we allow ourselves to be controlled by the Holy Spirit that our inner being will succeed or will be victorious in living to the glory of God which will result to maturity in our Christian faith. When do we need this power? We need this spiritual power at all times. If someone of us are suffering or having problem in our Christian walk today, church, remember that we can pray together as one body of Christ with the same spiritual force that Paul prays. When we are confronted with temptations, we need the spiritual strength to remain steadfast. Why Paul asking God for the believers to be strengthened in power so that Christ may dwell in their hearts, so that Christ may dwell in our heart. What does dwell mean? Dwell means to remain, to leave us as residents, according to Merriam Dictionary. Paul asking God to allow Christ to live in the hearts of believers as his residence. The word dwell gives the impression of permanence. In John 14, 23, we can see there that Jesus already promised us he would make his home in us. Paul prays that the Holy Spirit will strengthen us and that Christ would dwell in our hearts through faith. Paul uses two more words here to get us to understand the depth to which we are to go as Christian, to be rooted and to be grounded in love. Christ must dwell in our hearts for us to be rooted and grounded in his love. Why is it important for the believers to be rooted and grounded in Christ's love? For us to remain steadfast and persevere in any difficulties we might be facing. In Psalms 1, verse 1 through 3, these scriptures refers that our Christian life as like a tree planted near the waters that spread out his roots by the river. That tree is very healthy and enabled to bear good fruits. It never ran dry because it has an abundant water. We all know that a tree without enough water are good source or good source of water will eventually die. The tree survival relies mainly on the supply of water. Just like the tree, we need all the more to God in His Word and in Christ's love as our foundation at all times. We must understand that only God causes us to grow and have life because He is our source of life. A Christian's spiritual roots must be rooted in God's love for him to grow deeply. In other words, we, the believers of Christ, needed to be rooted and grounded in love, which is in Christ Jesus. We need to feel by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. In Matthew 7, 24 through 27, Jesus referred us Christian as wise men who built his house on the rock. When the rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against his house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation. This man chose to have with a house with a strong foundation. 
to secure his life. For us to remain firm in any difficult situation in life, our foundation, we must be grounded in Christ's love. Believers who are rooted and grounded in God's love not live in guilt, fear, or condemnation. Our Almighty Father sent His Son to die in our place because of our sins. And we will never have a firm and permanent foundation without fully experiencing and understanding the kind of love, that kind of love that is in, in Jesus. The hardships we endure in this Christian life and how we handle them are determined by the depth of our love for Christ. Why Paul wants us to be rooted and grounded in love? Bakit kaya yun ang prayer niya? For us to have the power to comprehend. For us to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Paul emphasizes that all followers of Jesus might have this knowledge. As he mentions her, you may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. Paul wants all believers to be united in God's love as one body of Christ. Paul wants us to grow together as one church. We can assume that the width of Christ, love reaches us, reaches an infinite number of people from every nation, tribe, people, and tongue. The length of Christ's love transcends from eternity to eternity. In short, we cannot measure it, it but we can somehow understand and feel it. God's love for you and me is so great and wonderful that we will never be able to comprehend its full dimensions. However, Paul prayed that we might at least may grasp God's love for all of us. Paul prays that we may be able to grasp with all the believers this measureless love of Christ. As a Christian, being rooted and grounded in love, we can also have God's strength to comprehend Christ's love in community with other believers, as Paul prays. Through the testimonies of our co-believers, we can grow also in our spiritual life. Why Paul wants the believers to be rooted and grounded in love? To know for us, for them to know the love of Christ that filled the fullness of God. Paul prays for believers to be rooted and established in love, to know Christ's love, and to be filled with the fullness of God. How will we know that Christ is in our hearts? We will know that Christ is in our hearts when we choose to love God with all our hearts, minds, strength, and souls, and are able to love others as we love ourselves. We will know that Christ is in our hearts when we choose to please God and glorify His name instead of hurting Him. We will know that Christ is in our hearts when we see a real transformation in our lives from being self-centered into Christ-centered life. Many of us think we know what love is, but we often, we often fall short most of the time. We look to man's perspective on love, which is a selfish love. Like if we say, I love you if you love me. I love you if you are good to me, or I love you as long as you follow my advice. People suffer in their marriages or any relationship they have because of this type of love. Why? Because usually we thought love as a feeling. This is not the kind of love Jesus has for us. In reality, love is a choice and an action. 
as 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 shows us. Many passages in the Bible tell us about the true meaning of love. In 1 John 4, 7 through 13 also shows us what God's love is. John says God is love and he is the source of love. He loves us so much that he sacrifices his son for us. Jesus is our great example of what it means to love. Everything Jesus did in life and in death were supremely loving. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to love. He lives in our heart and allow us to be more and more like Jesus. God's love is always a choice and an action. And our love should be like this. Should be like the love of Jesus. Now, how will do you display your love for God in the choices you make and the action you take? I want to share a short story, but in, in Bisaya language lang para madali, kasi mahirapan tayo mag-English. So, when I was, during in my youth time, I love to share the Word of God. Gina-challenge na ako akong self nga Lord. I know, kabalo ko kung paunsa niya ako gimahal. So, paunsa na ako, paunsa ko mag-reply sa gugma sa gino sa ako ah. I-challenge na ako akong self mga, mag-exercise ko og share sa uban. So, one time, nag-work ko diri sa sa Dakon Company. One year na ako nag-work. Then, uh, one time, kanang, in, sa company, 15 minutes lang ang Ang sa itawag ana ka ng 15 minutes lang ang break time. So, na ako'y kaoba, nag, nag-asya sa ako, ah, niya, na-asya ay, may kasama siya na natutulog more than 15 hours na, up uh, 15 minutes. And then siya nga, pwede ba daw, pukbukin ko yon para magising, baka makita ng ano, makita sa supervisor. And then, Sabi pa niya sa akin, lasing yan siya. So I try to, pumunta ako sa kaniya. Tapos sabi ko, Lord, sincerely yon pero hindi, hindi ko alam kung, kung mag-work ba yun. Sabi, sabi ko, Lord, hindi talaga, itong tao na to, hindi, siguro hindi kayo kilala. Then I pray to him na ma-open niya hang life. Ma -ma Makilala niya ang Panginoon sa buhay niya. Until how many months Hindi ko yun kilala, hindi ko, hindi ko alam ang pangalan niya, hindi ko talaga siya kilala. Tapos, after a month, kanang nakiklose siya sa akin, nag, 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 nagkailan na mi saya. Tapos, he tried to court me, he asked permission from my brother. Then sabi ko, iris talaga yun sa akin kasi alam ko kung ano ang para sa akin. Kasi lahat ng negative nandyan sa buhay niya. So, kaya sabi ko sa kanya, ko, sige, i-exercise ko to Lord. I try to share Him. Sabi ko sa kanya, pagtanggapin mo si Jesus sa buhay mo, I will say yes to you. Pero hindi ko yun, hindi ko talaga in-expect yun. Wala talaga akong expectation sa kanya. I tried lang. So, but I sincerely asked it from God. That man is my husband now. So, so, God's love is a powerful. He can do beyond our expectation. God's love is pure and complete. We are not perfect because of our human nature. But we should know that if we allow God to work in us, He could make us perfect. In our fifth point in this passage, Paul, giving a conclusion, he, he prayed for the Ephesians. He, he gave all glory to God. 
who is able through his mighty power at work within us, giving glory to Christ and praise to God. Paul, Paul's prayer for the Ephesians comes to an end with a benediction or doxology. It's a prayer of assurance that God is working in us, in our lives and in the church. This verse reminds the Ephesians and also to us of God's majesty and beauty. Paul is providing his, his readers as well as ourselves a reason to be delighted by God. Paul claims that God is capable of going above and beyond our expectations. Perhaps we believe God is incapable of our hearing of hearing our prayer. However, as a believer, we should be aware that God does. Perhaps you believe God cannot truly forgive you since you have committed some dark sin. However, as a believer, we should be aware that God can forgive us. Perhaps you believe that God cannot truly bless our church in the midst of the pandemic we are currently experiencing. However, we must remember that in God, we have victory. Church, we should know that God cannot only do more than we ask for, but also accomplish more, more than we imagine. We cannot comprehend something beyond God's greatness and power. Paul wants us to understand that this is who God is. We must consider his greatness. We must acknowledge the honor that he deserves after we have grasped who he is. Church, we are not baby anymore. We need to be matured. We are no longer babies when it comes to spiritual maturity. This is the moment that we must answer to God to do an action what he wants us to do. Everything he has done for us is a reason enough for us to reply him. As we can see in our current global condition, we could see in a lot of tragedy happened. Now is the moment for us to be in our Christian lives, to be strengthened in our Christian life. Let us help one another in growing as a church. We can thrive in any condition or season of life if we are anchored and grounded in love in that we may be able to prepare in us in his second coming the reason of paul's earnest prayer to god are to strengthen us with power so that christ may indwell in our hearts to being rooted and established in christ's love so that we may have power to comprehend the fullness of God. Therefore, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we must remember that it is really important to be rooted and established in God's love, and we need to strengthen and work out our fellowship with God, so that as we grow in Him, we will understand how wide, long, and deep is the love of Christ. As we get to know Him, we get to understand better how great, how deep God's love for us. Before wala po akong ibang hinihiling sa Panginoon, I want to know Him. I always asking Him, I want to know Him more. And I want to grow in His Word. But I did not imagine, and I never imagined, na mag-speak po ako dito ngayon. Wala po talaga sa isip ko na mag-preach. Mag, mag I love to share the Word of God for one-on-one -on -one or those unrich, un, un, unrich people. But wala po sa isip ko na mag-speak po ako in front of the congregation here in Ebenezer. But God allow us for me to grow. na alam ko na gagawin din niya yun sa inyo. So kung willing po tayo na mag-grow spiritually and to be matured more in Christ's love, we need to cooperate with the Lord. 
We need to follow what He wants us to be. Church, I don't know what challenges you are facing right now, but let me encourage you to challenge yourself today or this week. Whatever struggles you have, practice taking a posture of humility before God, just like Paul did. Ask God to bless you with some of those blessings for which Paul prayed in today's passage. Ask God to give you more of himself. Ask God to help you understand the greatness of Jesus. Ask God to fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit. God is able to answer more than what he asked for. Ask him for the big things like his power, his love, and in understanding his greatness and glory. To God be the glory. Good morning, everyone. May we all have a blessed Sunday. Let us continue worshiping our living and loving God by giving Him honor and thanksgiving as we take up our tithes and offerings unto Him. But first, let me thank Pastora Cecil first for that encouraging reminder about, our, um, about the love of God for us and our relationship with Him. May we all be strengthened and be rooted in Christ's love so that we will be steadfast in our faith as we continue to persevere to be more Christ-like amidst all the challenges that surrounds us. Thank you, Pastor Cecil. May the Lord bless you and strengthen you as you continue doing the ministry He entrusted into your hands. So now, let us honor God through our tithes and offerings. But first, uh, let us listen to the encouraging verses found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 to 10, and 2 Corinthians chapter um, 9, verses 6 to 8. So, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of your of all your crops then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine second corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 8 remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give gen each man should give what he has decided in his heart to, to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God's love, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Good work. So now, may I request all the ushers to please assist the giving of the tithes and offerings.
Thank you. May I request everyone to please rise for our doxology. And have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Again, happy anniversary and uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday po sa ating mga celebrants. May God continue to work in each of your lives and may you continue to grow in Him. Uh, kung sino man sa atin dito ang nagsa-celebrate ng kanilang birthday this week and at the same time ng kanilang anniversary, You can stand wherever you are so that we can acknowledge you. Nandito po ba sila? Ayan. So, yan po sila. You can go to them later on and uh, uh, give them your greetings. Also, we would like to welcome Princess May Ann. E. Alcariza. Welcome po sa ECAC. We, we are glad to have you here and that uh, we pray that you will continue to worship and journey with us. Ayan po. And then as always, it's important that we remember each other in prayer. So let's continue to remember our brothers and sisters who are in need of our prayers. I'd like to mention their names. Let's continue to pray for Sister Portia, Sister Mel, Sir Nurgil, uh, the mother of uh, Dr. Brillantes, and kindly include my auntie. Uh, Joan Likup. Okay, these are the people who are uh, struggling and uh, fighting from uh, cancer. But we praise and thank the Lord because God is faithful and He has been uh, giving them the strength to continue, the will to persevere. Kaya we, we really encourage everyone to remember them in your prayer time, in your quiet time. And then let's also include in our prayer Sina Sister Ola Er, Mam Fronda, Sister Leila, uh, Sister Marilu. Uh, let's continue to remember them also in prayer. Sila po yung may mga chronic uh, sicknesses no pag sinabing chronic yan yung uh, um pabalik-balik na nasakit i'm not sure kung tama po ako doon <laughs> doctor sam but uh, let's remember them as well in prayer 
And then also, uh, we, we encourage everyone no, to continue to join us in our prayer meeting. We do understand that uh, you have your schedules during Wednesday evening. Uh, that's um, 7.30. Uh, but if you are free, no, you can uh, be with us, uh, pray with us, so we can pray for the church concerns, the concerns of our nation, and the uh, the rest of the things that uh, we really need to consider in prayer. Uh, but, but know that we do understand kung kayo po ay talagang busy. Pero if you are available, you can uh, join us in our prayer meeting. Ayan. And then, continue to pray with us. We are... We are planning and uh, considering to improve some of the things that um, we need to improve in, in the church. So pray with us, pray for our plan to have a, uh, a parabang roofing, lalagyan ng ceiling yung likod ng church natin, so that we have an, a place where we can gather na hindi aircon na open for everybody para for our fellowship and other gatherings. So pray with us as we do that uh, project and also include in your uh, in your prayer time our uh, parsonage building project patuloy pa rin po natin ginagawa yan for our pastors na nagsaserve sa atin dito sa church. And then, lastly, we would like to tell everybody that uh, the church and the church office is open po every Wednesday. No, open po yan for everybody. Mas maganda po para uh, ma- ma-prepare namin, makapag-ready kami. Uh, we can welcome you properly. Mas maganda makapag-inform kayo ahead of time. So, every Wednesday, we are open for counseling. We are open for, you know, visitation, fellowship, and uh, bonding. If you want to bond with your pastors, you want to talk to them, we are all here every Wednesday. Yan, whole day po yan starting from 9.30 to 5 p.m. And also, the the church, our worship hall is also open. If you want to stay here in the hall, wanting to talk to God or to just meditate, the, the church, the worship hall will be open for everyone. Ayan. So if you want to also have fellowship or Gusto niyo yung medyo exclusive na prayer time. Uh, we have we have a room in the office which will be used for uh, for prayer time or for prayer and fasting. So may room doon. Yung office po natin doon, uh, we will uh, turn it into a prayer room. So if you want to be, you know, you want to be alone and you want to talk to God, that will also be open during that time Wednesday so everybody is welcome because we really want to know you more we want to fellowship with you guys at saka of course meron, may free coffee yan so sana po ay makavisit kayo sa amin dito every Wednesday but this is not to say also na you cannot contact us anytime no, you can still contact us anytime especially pag may mga emergencies may mga uh, kailangan kayo from us like counseling or prayer we are open anytime uh, 24-7 ika nga no, you can contact us 24-7 pagka emergency pero yung time na nandito kaming lahat that's going to be Wednesday uh, whole day okay so again open for everybody 
please come visit us para makapag-fellowship uh, naman tayo, makapagkwentuhan. So, this time as we end uh, this service, shall we all stand for our closing prayer and um, benediction. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the love that you have shown through your Son, Jesus Christ. And indeed, Lord, we are rooted in that love. And with that, we don't have to be afraid or even to worry. Because of that love, we know that you will care for us. We know that you will be there during times of struggles, during times of temptations. And because of that love, we will have that strength to go on, to move forward. For we know that with you, O oh God, on our side, nothing can be against us. But at times, Lord, our faith would dwindle. Our faith would become weak. And so we ask, Lord, that during those times, you will continue to empower us with your Holy Spirit. That you will continue to enable us, Lord God, to do the impossible. And Lord, also this morning, we would like to entrust to you those people whom we have mentioned. We ask that you be with them right now. I know some of them are probably afraid because of this sickness that they, are, uh, that they have. But Lord, I pray that you assure them that no matter what, in their pains, in their struggles, you will be there and that you will never leave them. We ask, Lord, that you heal them right now, that you touch the part of their body that is painful, and that you remove that pain right now, O God. Also, we would like to entrust to you our frontliners. It's true, Lord God, that everybody is already vaccinated. But Father, if we will not be careful, we will still be in danger them. So Father, praying for our frontliners, that you will continue to strengthen their immune system, and that you will continue to protect them and their families from COVID-19. Lord, in this journey, as we journey together in this time of pandemic as in this time of struggle we ask lord that you will continue to unite us that you will continue to give us the passion and the heart to grow more in our relationship with you and with one another help us lord to help each other help us lord to be together to work together in unity of faith more importantly help us to show that genuine love the love that we have experienced from you. Help us to show that love to others, even to, our, to the people we consider our enemies. So this time, Lord, as we go out from this worship hall, as we end this worship gathering, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. But now, and forever. Amen. Now let us have fellowship to one another as we sing this song. Oh, I love you with